Algebra 2, 4.4D, Triangularization Algorithm to Solve Systems of Linear Equations. If you haven't seen the previous videos, 4.4A, B, and C, you might get confused, and that's a strong might, okay? This is the end of Lesson 4.4, and the previous videos were really important. For a system of three equations and three variables, our goal is to get an equivalent system of equations in a triangular form. So what we're going to do is we're going to slowly get rid of the x, then we're going to get rid of the y and solve for z, and then use that to plug back into the other equations to solve for y and x. We use linear combinations to eliminate the x from two equations. Then we use linear combinations to eliminate the y from one of those two equations. And the system will now be in the triangular form and we'll have z. We substitute z in the second equation to find y and then substitute the y and z into the remaining equation to find x. You can use this algorithm to solve systems with many equations. Four equations, five, six, seven, eight equations. You'd need an awful lot of paper, but you could do it. So here's our system of three equations right here. And if you notice, it says in pink here, start with either of these. So it didn't matter which one I started with. You could start with either one of these as long as you're doing the same thing. Okay, so I'm going to back up a little bit so you can see all of them. So I chose to start with the bottom equation, x plus y plus z equals 2, because there's no coefficients. And it would be easy to multiply that one to fit it to the other ones to eliminate this x, because there's no coefficient here. So I multiplied it by a negative 6, created this equation out of it, and now, because I multiplied it by that negative 6, it created a zero pair, additive inverses, with this positive 6, and now we have the negative 6, and we can eliminate it. That's going to give us a negative 10y minus 1z equals 19. Then I did, took that same equation, and I multiplied it by a negative 5 to get rid of this 5x and I created a zero pair right here with the positive 5x and the negative 5x. Now I could have started with this one, multiplying by the negative 5, and then did this negative 6. It didn't matter which one I started with. What will end up happening is, either way, I'll get the same two equations. It would just be in different order. And what I can do is then find a multiple that they can meet at. So if you look at the green and the blue equations here, these first two equations, we need to eliminate the y. Where can a negative 10 and a negative 3 meet to make a zero pair, to make additive inverses? Well, what I can do is multiply this green one by a negative 3 to make that a positive 30y. Then I can multiply this one by a positive 10 to make that a negative 30y. And then that'll be the zero pair, wouldn't it? We multiply every single term by that negative 3 and by that 10. And what we get is this. Now we have our zero pair right here. When we simplify it and add this negative 30 to the positive 3, we get negative 27z. And dividing both sides by that coefficient negative 27, we get that z equals 1. Now, you notice I multiplied the green one by a negative 3 and the blue one by the 10. Well, I could have done it the other way around. I could have multiplied the green one by a positive 3 and the blue one by a negative 10. I still would have created a negative 30y and a positive 30y. See? It just depends. You don't need to choose the one I'm choosing. Just be smart and create that additive inverse. Okay? So either way, you're going to end up with z is equal to 1. Okay? Just find some place where they don't meet as additive inverses so you can create that zero pair. All right? So it doesn't matter as long as we create a zero pair from the additive inverses. All right. Then what I did was, now that I know that z is equal to 1, I plugged it into the first equation. And instead of negative 10y minus z equals 19, I got negative 10y minus 1 equals 19. I added the 1 to each side to eliminate the 1. And I got negative 10y equals 20, divided each side by the coefficient 10, negative, negative 10, I should say. And we came up that y is equal to negative 2. So now we know that z is 1, y is negative 2. We can plug it into this last red equation that doesn't have any coefficients. 
and we get x plus a negative 2 plus a 1 equals 2. When we combine like terms, this negative 2 plus the 1 makes a negative 1. Now to get rid of that negative 1, we can add 1 to each side of the equation and get x is equal to 3, and we have our ordered triple. x is 3, y is negative 2, and z is 1. Okay? So it doesn't matter what order you do this in, and it doesn't matter which one's the negative when you're doing stuff like this to create that additive, additive inverse. Either way, you're going to be okay, all right? Just be smart about it. When you're finding that multiple, try to find the least common multiple so the numbers aren't so large when you multiply them, okay? When we did this, I could have made it so that they met at 300y and negative 300y if I wanted to, but that would have been silly. I would have been multiplying by too big of numbers, see? So 30 was the least common multiple I could find between the 10 and the 3. And remember, it doesn't matter which two equations you choose to start with as long as you can eliminate x and create that zero pair, all right? And by creating common multiples, we can use the elimination. Our goal is to create zero pairs to isolate each variable, all right? When you look at this, and we got to the point where the x was eliminated, then we were right here on the triangle. See? We were at the second line. And when we got to the point where we sol we're solving for z, and we're here, that's the last line of the triangle. See? So all you're doing is eliminating the x, then eliminating the y, and then elim eliminating the z. All right? Okay. Our next video is 4.5, and we're going to discuss word problems that use a system of three equations. I'm going to add this video to the Algebra 2 playlist, and there'll be a link also for the Algebra 1 Chapter 8 playlist for systems of equations in this video's description. So you should just be able to click on them, all right? I know this is really confusing for some people. If you are really, really lost, then maybe you didn't watch these three videos. And if you did watch them and you're still confused, maybe you need to watch them again, all right? Give them a chance, okay? And take it slow. All right. Good luck. I'll see you next video. I think you can do this. Bye.